So now we're going to continue with the life of Elijah. And just to recap, the king in the days of Elijah was called Ahab and his wife was called Jezebel. And no other king or queen provoked God to anger or made God more angry than King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. The problem started whenever they built a false god called Baal and told all the people, you're no longer allowed to worship God in heaven, but you must worship this god called Baal. So people were faced with the choice, do we stay close to God, worshiping God, or do we forget about God and do we start worshiping the god Baal? And of course, Elijah comes along. Uh, This man, he didn't look like much, didn't dress like much, but he had a massive heart for God. He was a prophet, known as a prophet of fire. And we'll know all about that soon as well. And here was Elijah, and he comes to the king. He challenges the king. He challenges the queen. How dare you tell us to stop worshiping God? We love God with all of our heart, and we love him, and we want to serve him. And he gives us our food, he gives us our water, and we pray, we worship him. You can't take God out of our lives. And the king and the queen says, we can do whatever we want. We are the most powerful people on this earth. We no longer need your God. We now have our own God. And you can tell your God he no longer is relevant for our lives. And I just says, I'll teach you who God is. And I'm going to ask him to turn off the rain. And God did turn off the rain. Very unusual prayer. But it changed the whole country. And here was Elijah. Remember, God told him to hide. He said to go and to stay by a little brook called Cherith. And there he was for two years, two full years. And every day, God spoke to these birds called ravens. Remember, a raven bird is like a blackbird or a crow. They're a scavenger bird. They eat dead flesh. In fact, they hardly ever build their own nest. They would build, lay their eggs in other birds' nests. And if they do have their own, when the baby birds are only eight weeks old, they push them out of the nest so they have to survive for themselves. Do you ever notice if you have a little bird box in your garden, maybe you have, and you might feed robins or blue tit or greenfinch or sparrow, little small birds, and yet when a big raven comes and, and tries to eat the bird's food, you'll, you'll maybe get a stone and you'll say, get out of here, get out of here. You'll chase it away, won't you? Yet these are the birds. Do birds have ears? Do they? I honestly don't know. But some people think they don't. But yet when God speaks to them, They can listen. And here, God says to the birds, Ravens, take meat and take bread and go and feed Elijah. Every single day, the raven's wings went flap, flap, flap. As down to the rivers they flew, they carried meat, they carried bread, as God had told them to. And the birds were obedient to God. Do you know when a little sparrow falls to the ground? God knows all about it. And he goes on to say, how much more do I not care for you, my little children? And Elijah sat here for two years. It was like hide and seek. Elijah was hiding. The king and all the soldiers were looking for him and they could not find him anywhere. After two years, the water dries up. Did God forget about Elijah? No, of course he didn't forget about Elijah. God says, Elijah, up you get and go to a place called Sarapath. Never been there before. Sarah Plath was a place where Jezebel the queen came from and God was sending him back there. But as he walked, he couldn't believe what he saw. Because there was no rain, the animals were dying. The ground was so hard, it was cracking. The trees were dying. The crops were failing. And there was barrenness everywhere. And because the king told the people to stop worshiping God. Do you see when you leave God out of your life, Do you honestly expect God to help you, to bless you? It doesn't work. If you ask God to stay out of your life, you're on your own, my friend. And you don't want to go through life without God. God means absolutely everything to me. You might think, I've never seen God before, so I don't believe in God. Have you seen air before? Yet you need air to breathe, don't you? Imagine God sucked the air out of your room right now. How would you breathe? You'd be like, (gasps) wouldn't you? Of course you would. Air comes from God. Imagine there was no water to drink. Where does the water come from? You might say the trees. Of course it does. Where does the tree come from? The seed. The seed comes from the soil. Ultimately, you can trace it right back to God. 
who made this whole world, created the world, the trees, the rivers, the waters, even the very air that we breathe. Do we need God? Yes, we do. What happened whenever Elijah got the Sarapath? We're going to find out in the next one. Thank you.